Hello everyone, my name is Raymond McMillan and I, I welcome you to Insurance Education. Today I'd like to talk to you about civil law spelt with a capital C. Civil law spelt with a common C. Is there any difference really? Yes, there's a significant difference between both of them. Anytime you see civil law spelled civil sorry spelled with a capital C, that text is referring to Roman law. But when we look at civil law spelled with a lower case, common C, it means we are talking about the law of any country, whether it's civil or criminal and we know there are civil penalties as against criminal penalties when when we look at the, let, let's go back way back in 1066 1066 around then english law started to develop with different customs which became common law and ladies and gentlemen still applicable in policy documentation up in today's day we also know that the english system spread throughout the commonwealth Australia, Asia, Africa, the Caribbean, a lot of the com co countries, their own system of law and governance is based on English law. But there was also Roman law. Continental Europe, they adopted a lot of the Roman laws. Right now, we know the UK is made up of England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. But before the Union, about 300 years ago, even Scotland, their laws were based a lot on Roman law. In the, all the territories now which use the English law would have the common law, common law position. Then you have case law which became precedent as in the Life Assurance Act 1774 in insurance. There are many other case laws which determine precedent which have been used in insurance today in today's day and then you had the government the state making own, their own laws way back then the king could have made laws as well that is the significant difference ladies and gentlemen if you're a diploma student you know that's an examination question and um, because we use the english system almost all over the world it's important to know that there was roman law civil law capital c and when we talk about uh, civil law common C, we are talking about the, the the rule of law and the how it is managed in any country whether you get civil penalties or criminal penalties depending on what on the incident i want to leave you with two examples well let me yes two examples in your insurance policy document today one at common law talking about the english system an individual, if you, if you have a claim, you have a policy insured and you have a claim, at common law, you need to behave as though, that's the insured, you have no insurance and take all measures to protect undamaged property. At common law, you can't adopt the policy well. That's why I have insurance. Leave it, let it burn. No. Insurers didn't leave it to common law. They've made it a policy condition if you check your claims condition under the policy your policy document you would see that insurers have restated it as part of their terms and conditions that that's the attitude you need to adopt without risking injury to your life or person of somebody else if you can use a fire extinguisher to help reduce the the, the claim the the, cl the the loss spreading you need to do that. That's what the policy requires. If you can save some of the stock or contents in a building before the fire engulfs them, you need to do that. Let's look at another one, another situation, which is called subrogation and contribution. Now, at common law, subrogation gives the insurer the right, if they, one of the insured has been injured or, or their property been damaged by a third party, the insurance company would pay the claims of their insured. And now that gives them the right to stand in the shoes, subrogation, and recover from any negligent party. But ladies and gentlemen, the experience that insurance will have in is if a claim takes two years to settle, it's only after they have settled their insured's claim they would now acquire these rights to stand in the shoes of the insured to recover. But they were running up against a problem. 
Evidence goes missing, witnesses die or migrate, and people's memory fade with time. Therefore, the chances of the insurer recovering were greatly reduced because of the length of time it was taken to recover. You know what insurer says? No, no, no. Let's put a subrogation condition in the policy which restricts the position when it comes to the common law, where as soon as I as the insurer have accepted liability for the claim and is processing the claim on behalf of my insured, I can start subrogation proceedings against any negligent party. Can you see the, the, the greater chances of the insurer recovering? Because the information is still fresh and they are actively pursuing recovery whilst meeting the, their obligations under the policy contract for their own insurance. Another quick one before I go, let's talk about contribution. The common law position with contribution is if you have three insurers, insurer A, B, and C, and they all, all three of them insure your property. Let's say for 100,000, insurer A has 20,000, insurer B, 20,000, insurer C, 60,000. If there's a claim, a valid claim under the policy, that insured under common law can go to any one of those insurance companies class, and <laughs> excuse me, not class, but ladies and gentlemen, and seek recovery 100% and then the insurers now would be responsible to go after the other two insurers and ask them to meet their obligation under the contract. Do you see the, the insurer said, but that would be using up my cash flow. That can put me in a position I might have difficulty recovering, I hope not from the other two insurers. To avoid that, let's put a contribution condition in the policy of insurance and class you can, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not class. You can check your document to see if it's there. And it says, when there's a claim, if I have 20% of the risk as insurer A, I will pay my rateable proportion of that claim and you, the insured, would seek recovery from the other two insurers. The difference between the common law position and the policy position. I hope you like what you've just heard, uh, would you click the like button if you, if you like it? May I invite you to subscribe to our channel? We always encourage you to subscribe to our channel. And thirdly, if you would like access to my next video, why not click the notification bell above? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.